learn to read, literature opens up new worlds to us, both real and imagined. And more and more, we're seeing new authors spring up in our own Northern Marianas community. Several, of course, who have appeared here on our show. Our guest today is a Saipan-based, globe-trotting writer who not only writes, but also helps everyday people capture and publish their own stories. Walt Goodrich, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Catherine. Now, you're the author of 20 books and several blogs, as well as the founder of the WeLoveSaipan.com website. Tell us, how did you get into writing? Okay, uh, well, how did I get into writing? Well, I originally, I went to Columbia University in New York. I'm originally from Jamaica, and I ended up in engineering because my counselor in high school said, you're good in math and science, you need to be an engineer. So being a good student, I followed her lead, I ended up in engineering, but I didn't really like it. And I remember on my first day, after I graduated, my first day on the job in corporate America, I realized beyond the shadow of a doubt that I absolutely hated it. Wow. I hated engineering, I hated the, the people I was working with, I hated the whole... The, the, what I really hated was the concept of going to work every day for someone else. You know, I wanted my freedom. Um, but no one had ever asked me, what is it, you know, what's your passion, what is it that, that you love to do? So um, I s took that upon myself to start asking myself, what is it that I, I really enjoy? And that for me, that was music. When I was in college, I did a radio show for five years. I was uh, Sir Walt, the reggae DJ on Columbia University's radio station. And I knew I had a passion for music, so I started designing album covers. I started a management company. I uh, started a record label uh, putting out artist music. And um, to make a long story a little bit longer, I, uh, <laughs> I also found that I was helping other people to do the same thing. Once I was in the music industry, I'll give you an example, people would call up and they would ask, you know, uh, Mr. Goodridge, I saw your CDs or at that time your vinyl LPs in the stores. Um, how can I do the same thing? So I would find myself on the telephone with people, strangers, just sharing knowledge, sharing information about this is how you get distribution, this is how you uh, get your records out, that sort of thing. And one fellow, and this was a very critical moment in the process, one fellow, I remember this clearly, he was in Texas, I was in New York, and after speaking to him for about an hour, he said, wow, thank you for all that information, Mr. Goodridge, I really, you know, if you had asked me to pay for it, I would have gladly done so. And of course, that the light bulb went light on, bulb went on <laughs> uh, over my head, and I said, wow, how much would you have, you have been willing to pay? And I remember this clearly, he said, I don't know, $179. <laughs> so uh, that had me realizing, realize that the value that I was sharing for free with others, my natural passion for teaching, for sharing knowledge, was something that had value. And I sat down, and with no literature training, with no journalism degree, I decided that I was going to write a book. And I... Uh, no one told me that you can't write a 250-page book in four weeks, so that's what I did. I sat down, and day after day, you know, mornings and evenings at lunchtime, I put a book together that showed step-by-step step how to start your own record label, how to release your own music. And again, this was just something that I was passionate about. And uh, looking back now, it's, it's just the desire to share that knowledge is what um, prompted me to do it. So that was the beginning. I put a book together. I sold it through mail order because that was before the Internet uh, days. And within a few months, I was able to match my civil engineering income. So uh, to put this in perspective, I had gone four years to a university to learn engineering, and I was making about $50,000 a year. And I wrote a book in four weeks with no journalism training, and I was able to match my income, you know, making about the same monthly from, from, uh, from that passion pursuit. So that's how I got into writing. It was just a, a desire to share knowledge and using a a talent that I didn't know that I had. Well, what's really interesting about this story and kind of exciting is that you didn't necessarily, um, like you said, major in journalism and you had something that you were very interested in, mm -hmm. which was the music industry, and your publication was based on um, what your interest was. Right. So we don't have to necessarily throw away everything else we know and say, I am going to write. We can actually draw off a draw from something that we're very knowledgeable in or interested in. Well, yes, and that's the basis. Uh, after I wrote my first book, I wrote others and uh, continued to develop my, um, my mission and my purpose. And I ended up creating a concept I called turning your passion into profit. 
And the, the basis of it is that, yes, there is something that you're passionate about, whether it's cats or dogs or sewing or singing or playing the trumpet, whatever it is, there's something that you're passionate about. And by virtue of having that passion, you're usually more of an expert than other people because this, you know, this is something that you're interested in. So, yes, what I have found over the years is that the best way to encourage people to... Uh, to turn their passion into profit is one first to establish what that passion is something and it, it can be anything it can be uh, anything that you're passionate about experiencing anything that you know an instrument or something creative that passion should be the basis of whatever it is your pursuit is whether it is in literature or even if it's in business that would be the best thing to, to base your business on now, uh, some people do find the strength and the resources to, to publish, as you have, but you took it a step forward, and you started to help other people get their stories out. What made you decide to do that? Well, again, I've um, once I discovered that my purpose in life was to share knowledge and help other people, then I realized that all through my life that has been a consistent theme, right? whether I was in elementary school, uh, tutoring other kids, or, you know, uh, in university as a... Um, the chairman of the Education Committee on the National Society of Black Engineers, whatever it was, I realized that that need to share knowledge and help others know what I know is something that drives me. So once I discovered how basically relatively easy it is for you to self-publish and put your books out there, then it was the next natural step to, to let others know how easy it is as well. Because one, as I do more workshops, as I do more consulting, I realize that a lot of people have big dreams. They they have things that they'd like to do, but simply lack the information. And it's not rocket science, as it says, it, but it's really just simply knowing where to go to publish your book, what steps to take. And it really is very simple. And, and, and I'm not uh, trivializing the whole publishing industry, but it, nowadays, with uh, advances in technology, it is very, very simple for people to have a book idea and within, I'm, I'm very serious about this, within in less than a week, you could have your book on Amazon. From the day you finish it and decide that this book is finished, um, you can have a book selling internationally on, on, on Amazon.com. And in the second half of our show, we do want to share some of your knowledge on how to get that done. But let's talk first about some of the success stories you've been a part of to get people encouraged. Okay. Uh, two that come to mind. When I landed on Saipan, there is a, it's a very unique community, as you know. And there are lots of different, what fascinated me about uh, coming to Saipan was the range of uh, ethnic groups and cultures and nationalities here on the island. And I got exposed to um, the garment factory industry, uh, the garment I industry here, and I helped a young lady to write and publish a book called Chicken Feathers and Garlic Skin, which is the story of a Chinese garment factory worker here on Saipan. And that one... Uh, is also selling on Amazon and doing well. And um, recently there was a young lady from the Philippines who wrote a child, a children's book um, called The Boy Who Wanted to, The Boy Who Dreamed to Be with His Parents on Saipan, which is a children's story but very poignant because it touches on, a, on an issue that affects a lot of uh, contract workers, a lot of people in the f sense that they, around the world, in the sense that they leave their homeland to go overseas to work to make a better life for their families and this book is told from a child's perspective on what it's like to have mommy and daddy overseas and the longing that's in his heart to reconnect with his, uh, with his family. Do you feel there's anything, um, what kind, or what kind of a decision or what kind of qualities does a person need to have um, to take this step and start telling their own story? Uh, very good question. The and I know I know you've worked with a, a lot of people. Right. Uh, maybe some of them haven't even panned out yet. But um, what do you find is the turning point? What I have found is simply the belief level. And this is after, I guess, years of uh, doing co coaching and consulting. is the thing that prevents people from taking that step to do what they want to do is simply the fact that they don't believe they can do it. So my job as a coach or as a consultant is really very simple. All I'm here to do is to show people that it can be done. And here is someone who did it. Here is somebody who used to be a civil engineer who walked away from his career to, you know, to run away to a tropical island, and now I survived just selling my books on the Internet. So once people can look at me and say, wow, if he can do it, 
maybe I can do it too. That's really the, the critical factor is simply raising an individual's belief level. If they believe they can do something, then the how is secondary. How to do it is secondary because you'll find a way, you'll find the means, you'll find the contacts, but that's that kernel of belief that says this is, this is possible for me is the critical turning point. Do you find that the people that eventually do get through um, all the procedures, all the hard work, and uh, publish their book, how do you find it changes them as individuals? Well, it raises their, it changes their concept of who they are because now, you, you know, now they, forever and ever, they will have this identity that has changed to I am a writer, I'm a published writer. Even if they only sell one book, you know, it's the fact that I created something that has value. Someone has gone on Amazon.com and taken out their credit card and ordered a book that I wrote. Uh, working with the young lady who wrote the, the, um, the boy who dreamed to be with his parents on Saipan, Riza Ramos, I watched as well how that changed her concept of herself because if, um, until we worked together and we published that book, it was just a dream in her mind and she really didn't have a concept of, you know, that concept of Riza the writer was something that was just a dream for her. But now that it's um, re been realized, now she's thinking about her second book and third book. So it, it, it raised, takes you to a whole different level and it, it empowers people to think differently about themselves and achieve greater things. Um, you're living here in Saipan now, yes. correct? And you've been here for a number of years. Um, what stories do you think might be of interest to <laughs> international readers? <laughs> you said you'd like spontaneous, spontaneous interviews. So. Oh, of course. Okay, let's see. Well, again, one of the things that intrigued me about Saipan is, you know, you have 300 million people living in the United States, and as we always joke, the people who live here, that Saipan is one of the best kept secrets. There are a lot of people who simply don't know what life is like here on Saipan, and whether it's uh, contract workers, garment factory workers, whether it's expats who come here, whether it's the whole dating scene on Saipan, I'll, I'll share you a secret, a secret. One of the things that intrigued me about Saipan was a little secret that a, fellow, a friend of mine told me about how beautiful the women here are <laughs> on Saipan. And so was that did that secret turn out to turned be a lie to be or the truth? <laughs> turned out absolutely to be true. So um, just uh, from a, a social interaction, from you know a lifestyle where, uh, that's part of the United States but still a tropical lifestyle way out in the Pacific. There are just so many aspects of life on Saipan that I had that, um, you know, Chamorro culture, b before December of 2005, I'd never even heard about Saipan. So I had no idea what Chamorro culture was, Carolinian culture. I mean, there's just a whole lot of about that you're exposed to living on Saipan that a lot of people would find very, very interesting. Uh, lifestyle, culture, people, um, languages, how people interact with each other from different parts of the world, you know, the marriages between Japanese and Americans and, you know, how it's just a really, really eclectic mix of stories that, that, um, that are very valuable just from an educational standpoint for people all over the world. So for anybody out there who's saying, me too, I can identify with that, mm -hmm. and, and yes, I do want to try something different, I do want to pursue this, something that I haven't done for in a while. Um, what's the first step they would take to to um, go about writing a book? Should they just start writing? Well, yes. The, um, from a belief level standpoint, one of the things that comes to mind would be to go to a website called bookmarket.com. And on that site, there is a link, I believe, that says success stories. And just reading about some of the success stories of very, very popular books that were written and self-published can really start people thinking about, wow, if, you know, if, if he can do this, if she can do this, and I can do this too, and that there is a possibility here that my book could be just as, as successful. The next step from a creative standpoint would be just to start writing, to sit down hopefully with a computer, and I'd suggest people get more familiar with um, you know, typing and working on computers, and just start to uh, write whatever it is you'd like to share. And uh, I'll give a little tip. When I encourage people to write books, one of the questions that I suggest they start with is, why am I writing this book? And this would end up being perhaps the introduction or the preface to your, to your book. So sit down and start saying, why am I writing this book? Why am I, Catherine Perry, writing this book? I'm writing this book to share with you what it's like to be 
Carolinian on Saipan. After you read this book, you will have a greater insight into what you know our history and culture has been. So you start writing, and that helps keep you focused, and it helps.